Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, you know don't you, you know. Right, let's go straight in, balls deep. Kelbrook against Crawford. I don't really know what to say about it to be honest. It looks like Eddie Hearn's not interested in Kelbrook, doesn't it? Did you see that interview <clears throat> he did on Boxing Social? If you go to the last five minutes at Boxing Social interview with Eddie Hearn, <clears throat> he gives his opinion, doesn't he, on uh, the fact that you know he's not working with Kel and this shows no to do with him and blah de blah. And he was more or less saying that if he'd have put the fight on, he'd have he'd have had it on Sky. I mean, this is how I look at it, right? And I thought Rob Tebbett asked him a good question at the end. After everything Eddie Hearn's been through with Kel Brook, winning, winning world title in America and, you know, them defences in England and then fighting Golovkin, Errol Spence and you've got Eddie Hearn there turning around saying that Kel shouldn't be fighting at 147. He's only saying that because he's nothing to do with the fight. If Eddie Hearn had obeyed that fight, he'd be bigging Kel up as the best 147 guy ever. And I think it's a bit of sour grapes, but can you see how the tables have turned now? Now Eddie's not got his claws into Kel Brook, and Kel's doing his own thing. See where I'm coming from? And I can see Kel Brook against Amir Khan happening now. I can, I can, see, I can see it happening on BT Sport down the line. Uh, I think that Eddie Hearn has shown his true colours. Uh, he's got a bit of pull at the sky. If they wanted that fight with Kel Brook and Crawford, they could they could get that fight. Of course they could, but I just think it's bad form from Eddie Hearn. But uh, as regards the fight, well, you've got Dominic Ingle saying that he needs a 12-week camp to prepare for Crawford, for, for Kel. Look, Dominic, what, what are you coming out with crap like that for? You're the man that put him in with Golovkin and Errol Spence. So don't, don't start talking about 12-week camps. If Kel Brook were training in Sheffield, you'd be training him. It's only because you don't want to go abroad and get caught with this pandemic or whatever. That's the only reason. If they made it worth your while, you'd do it. So stop making out that you're not money motivated, Dominic. You are. You greediest person in South Yorkshire boxing. So don't make out that you that you, you're trying to take the moral high ground after you, after some of the things you've done with Kelbrook, some of the stunts you've pulled. You should be embarrassed. You've got the art of a fucking breadcrumb, for starters. So don't make out that you're Mister Take the Moral High Ground. Jesus, it's boxing, mate. Your biggest or in boxing, you shit house point I want to make though is this look how it's gone for Kel Brook from being blue eyed boy to thrown under a bus against Golovkin then Errol Spence and then in wilderness and nobody caring about him hey, everybody's been leeching off Kel Brook Dominic Ingle, Eddie Hearn no doubt Kel Brook's stepdad's been leeching off him do you know what I mean all these people here they've, got, they've not got Kel Brook's best interests at heart yeah, Kel Brook shouldn't be fighting at 147, so I agree with Eddie Hearn about that. But Eddie Hearn said that before, and then still put him in at 147. So they can't have it both ways. Yeah, he probably should be fighting at 154, but it's his choice, isn't it? But I think it's pretty sad that after what Kel Brook's done for Eddie Hearn, I think he was one of his first few signings, wasn't he? That they can't get him on Sky. Bad form, innit? It's the old Lee Purdy syndrome, innit? My fighters are my family. And then look what happened to Lee Purdy. Hey, look how they treat him in end. Hey, they threw him under a bus against Devon Alexander and then the rest, as they say, is history, innit? There's no friends in this game. Promoters don't do friends. All you people who keep thinking Eddie Earns your best mate, he's not your best mate. Does the promoters don't do best mates with fighters, they don't do it, they do earning and then when, you've, when you're no good to them no more they move on to somebody else. You've all heard the story about how 
Don King arrived in a limousine in Kingston, Jamaica, I think, when Joe Frazier defended against Foreman. Don King left in a limousine with Foreman. He arrived with the champ and he left with the champ. Take heed from that. All right, take heed from it. All you boxers who think Eddie Hearn's your best mate or Frank Warren or anybody, they're not your best mates. Frank Warren's got a saying. If you want loyalty, get a dog. He used to come out with it. It's Mickey Duff's original saying. But Frank Warren's main saying is this. You've got to treat fighters like mushrooms. Feed them shit and keep them in dark. All right, so all you fighters turning pro or being promoted by certain people, remember that. Because when the, when the push comes to the push, these people will drop you like a stone. All right, you've just seen what Eddie Hearn did to Kel Brook there live on TV on internet boxing social last five minutes that's what he feels about Kel Brook that's what he think, thinks about him all right somebody who had both his eye sockets smashed in on his shows that he can't even get him on 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 sky on just not even buying fight buying rights to fight we're not talking pay-per-view they can't even give him a slot Hey, so don't talk to me about loyalty. If you want loyalty, get a dog in boxing. There ain't no loyalty. So all you young boxers, remember this video. Remember it. All right. Thanks for liking and subscribing, leaving a comment. All right. Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing.